Hello, 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 and welcome to the Rag Company Podcast. I'm Dane, and I'm also tired. Levi, to my right. I'm sick. And Anthony, to my left. Also sick. We are the yeah. Rag Company Podcast, guys. Yeah, oh, up, guys. Man, and we just got back from a trip. <laughs> yeah, we got to go to the G Technics. <laughs> Luckily, the, we've got a large car a while. Large compliment of Fisherman's Friends. Yes. Uh, so As a matter of fact, on. may I please have a grapefruit? Our oh, immune systems lie. have been compromised. We need to talk <laughs> yes. about that. That much so, time on airplanes will catch up with you. And so taking we were, advantage we of. were talking about it, and basically over the last four weeks, we've been home for less than 15 days. Yeah. Which means we've been on the road for like 15 days. Yeah. I was trying to calculate how many flights we took because I think we're somewhere in like the, or well over like, like I think like 14 total flights or something like that between yeah. everything. I can't remember yeah. the amount of times we've gotten on a plane and gump come down basically. Yeah. yeah. And it's in the last getting like four weeks. Kind of so. ridiculous. Yeah. Well, and I mean, it, so it, we're, we yeah. like doing this and it's fun, but we're done for a little bit, which is nice. There are people who do it for a living all the time. Yeah. And it's you guys cool are for them, champions. But like, for us in our case, well, like, it wasn't originally part of the plan, but now we realize we got to go out and yeah. like, meet people well, face like, to face. And it's like, a better way to do it. Cause you want to get that, interaction but getting there is you know well like jason rose yeah. flies a lot mm-hmm. uh ivan Lacroix flies a lot yeah lars from color lock flies a lot mm-hmm. around the world yeah like um and they and all of them fly all over the world and so like it's it's interesting and like i used to see like my aunt she flies for top golf and she does the same thing. Like she's all over the world and she's like wearing masks and sitting in first class and wiping. Yeah. Like, those masks start to you know, make and sense I'm like, after a while. Oh yeah. I see that now that we're, you know, yeah. traipsing in on that yeah. and getting those. But Jeff was sick. He's the one that got us sick. Yeah. He well, was and sick right before we left, like but, the day before we left, he got sick. But I mean like how, how crappy is that? I was sick for over a month. Yeah. Right. You were, with yeah, some virus. Leading and then in I have bad. one week of like, wow, I'm back to normal. Yeah. And then you were bam. so confident too. Yeah. You were like, this is awesome. I'm like, He's like my immune system is ready for it. It had anything. to have been right. Like I was sitting there thinking like, there's no way like it's, it's got my immune system's got to be like freaking, you know, super bad right now. Yeah. And yeah, no. Not at no, all. You can hear it. He's talking through like his nose. Yeah, pretty much. Much. yeah. no, yeah. We uh, <laughs> so Jeff was sick. So first things first, we got on the plane uh, on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wednesday morning, we got there to the airport. Uh, Jeff was like, "I'm really sorry, guys. I have a cold coming on. I feel." <laughs> and we're oh. all like, "Cool, awesome!" Literally, as we're walking to our gate, about to get strapped into a tube, into a tube, hang out with recirculated air. air. <laughs> awesome. And I got to draw the straw where I got to sit next to him mm. yeah. for that first flight. So I was like, all right, cool. This is gonna, well, hopefully we don't get sick. Like, I'm really, and I had been like prepping. Yeah. I've been doing emergency, like two of those packets every morning. Yep. Like, my, my mom brought me one. She's like, here for you. I was like, awesome. Oh, this is going to be great. And uh, yeah, that didn't work. I had zinc tablets from the Zycom, Zycam, like cold tab. Like, yeah. I had some of those. And I was like, I'm just going to boost myself so like I don't get sick. I'm glad I travel with all this stuff. Ugh. Yeah. So we got on the plane. Uh, First stop was in Seattle. Beautiful yeah. Seattle. Because you can't go the right way until you've gone the wrong way. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and like you guys, you know me, it really sucks because I'm one of those guys where I have to, I have to be moving forward uh, constantly in a plane to feel like you know things are going okay. Going backward just to go forward kills me yeah i'm sitting there thinking so, we truly have to fly from one end of the country to the other we Reminder, literally we are located in boise so going yeah. to seattle what we're getting at is seattle's to the west of us seattle's eight hours to the west of us by yeah. car by plane it's like an hour yeah. and so we hopped on a plane for an hour then when we left seattle we flew non-stop to atlanta all the way across the country <laughs> which was crazy which it was, was fun which it was, was a good trip was a good which plane, surprisingly right? that was pretty great because Flying into Seattle, there was a ton of snow because Ooh. Seattle's getting dumped on right now. Mm-hmm. And so we flew into Seattle. And it was a weird landing. It was yeah. like one of those ones where we kind of like floated in yeah. and it wasn't really yeah. like a normal landing. And then from there, uh, we stopped to grab breakfast really quick. And then we flew and then into Atlanta. Um, that flight was only four hours and three minutes. Right. We were an hour ahead of schedule because of the tailwind, which was. Tailwind gave you a healthy boost. Which was like, yeah. thank God. It was yeah, amazing. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. 
So Where once we at? once we landed in Georgia, um, it's funny because you know everybody's saying, "Ah, oh, prepare for you know nice weather. It's going to be so much nicer than you know in Boise." <laughs> we got off that plane, and I'm pretty sure it felt colder there than it did in yeah, Boise it was at that raining time too. Humid, cold. yeah. It was, it was interesting, and so uh, that was my first time in the Atlanta airport, yeah, at least that I too. know of. Yeah. And it was busy, and it was big, um, but it, it's pretty easy to 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 manage and get yeah, through. Yeah, they have good directions to navigate. Yeah. I've been in other airports where it's like. Like shot like Chicago O'Hare. Sometimes you're like, yeah. I had to stop once and go like, where is <laughs> this? Because I couldn't find signs for it. Atlanta yeah. but like seems Atlanta, better prepared to manage yes. the number of people that go through. The yeah, airport. Atlanta. There's tons of signs everywhere for everything. It's <clears> like, wow, this is a piece of cake. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, we so, got our rental car. Yeah. Uh, we suburban. got ourselves a suburban, and uh, and then we headed uh, into Seattle or into Atlanta. <laughs> sorry, Oof. we headed into Atlanta. Uh, and Jeff had rented us a hotel room for the night uh, in mm-hmm. Roswell. Yeah. Roswell, Alpharetta, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So we uh, we stayed the night at a Best Western that was by far the nicest hotel we've been in in a long time. Like, well, for, I don't know I about mean, like, that. I mean, no, I'm saying like for for a two two three star for, for, for the low, price like, for the price for the price low yes. low price hotel it had. The nicest I mean, it was beds like I've ever seen. Seventy a bucks a room, seventy bucks a night. That and was pretty it was, cheap. Yeah, like our the first room was great. Yeah, when we got a second room, like our like we had some light bulbs out in our room. We had yeah, yeah, whatever. The normal, towel normal, bar normal was stuff, hanging off, yeah. like little stuff. But like the beds were nice. That was the most important thing, right? I mean, <laughs> most of the time you go into a hotel, you're just planning to sleep or stay there briefly, and then yeah, you're off. no, but it was it was good. So we all had a good night's sleep. We went to the Olive Garden though for dinner. I liked that because it was literally a rock it's throw. In it was lot. in the parking lot, so we just walked over there, um, and we got in there. And we all got, um, I don't know, I don't know what we got. We got for food. I think I got, I got like big the ziti. chicken scampi or something like that. It really, I'm just in it for the breadsticks and soup yeah. and salad. That's chicken a, and shrimp carbonara with a Moscow mule. Ooh, Dane. Yeah, Dane. Dane liked to eat fancy. Um, so uh, <laughs> after that, though, we went back to the hotel. Um, got a pretty good night's sleep. Woke up the next day, and that's when we had to make our small little road trip over to the Atlanta Motor Speed, uh, Atlanta, Atlanta Motorsports Park, Motor yeah. Sports Park. <clears throat> I can't talk right now. Yeah. Um, and so driving through there. Um, and that was about an hour and a half drive. Yeah, and it's in the mountains, which it's, is kind of cool. It's an like... interesting drive because you finally make your way out into Appalachia, those are I don't well, know yeah. the exact kind of location, it's, but it's country. funny because yeah. well, I mean, like you know, compared to where we live, it's all it's all mountains and it's all forest and yeah. it's just so crazy because But it's um, different. Like there's it's like farmland in forests. Yeah. Like Correct, yeah. Like there was like forests like farmland cut out of the forest where here it's just mountainous. <laughs> yeah. We're like, called the city of trees, but I don't think we have half as many trees. No, no, we have, we have, we have, we have, we have like a, trees coast, everywhere. A we just learned that East the coast trees. has way more trees. Like. Yeah. Um, but going through there, it was just really cool because, you know, like I was kind of joking around, I'm like, this is the forest where people die. Like, you yeah, know, you hide bodies, you hide bodies in, in the swamp. This is where vampires live, like no joke. <laughs> and so we started talking about that and then Dane made up, you know, brought up a good point that Georgia has all these incentives for filming. Yeah. And so they do film a lot of that, you know, vampire stuff, a lot of Anthony's that. Anthony's favorite you know, show, The Vampire Diaries. I love that it. show. Give me that teen mythical drama. <laughs> Give it to me. I love it. So getting back into it though, so The Walking Dead, all yeah. of that is filmed there, but it's funny because it's so scenic in the sense that any any direction you look could be a shot for a you know, oh, yeah. movie or yeah. a TV yeah. show. Yeah, beautiful. And um, all the woods and, and all, spooky all, and scary all at the same time. All the trees have been, you know, all the leaves have fallen off the trees. But um, what was the most interesting, and this is something we're, we're truly not used to over here, is just all of the old um, buildings, houses, things that have just been abandoned and just left there yeah. for. Who knows? Sixty plus years, seventy plus years. I mean, and seeing all like the bramble or briar stuff growing over mm-hmm. all the yeah, yeah. Like, it looks like old construction line equipment. Kind of stuff. Like the, yeah, it's. Like, I mean, it's super eerie. Like the old and... shack, like the old houses with the now, windows. Busted granted, out. if you live over there, this is all normal, and you're like, I don't know why. You yeah, guys we don't are so get to see that. By that. Like, but for us, it's like well, totally foreign to us. So yeah. well, it was cool to see. I mean, that and these old cars. I mean, there was one house we we, we drove by. And it looked like a hoarder lived there because they had all these pots and all of these <laughs> things. But then they had a whole caboose there that was open that had, um, from a distance, you know, these really old Coca-Cola bottles. And mm-hmm. I could see, I'm like, I'm like, what is that a shop? Is that a, what is that? I'm like, no, it's just somebody's house. Yeah. And so 
it was just kind of cool. But then also just the twisty roads. I mean, I mean, talk about having one hell of a drive. If you were in a cool car or a motorcycle, yeah. um, that would be an absolute blast driving up through those mountains. Uh, but after a while, we did pull up to AMP. Um, pulling Which up was in a really cool place, really yeah, really cool, and especially in being in the middle of the woods, it kind of yeah. takes you by surprise. Shout out to everybody who works there; you were all fantastically friendly people. Everybody really was really nice, yeah. and way more accommodating than you'd expect because you think a racetrack like the rules. Oh my god, the liability. No, we but they were out. like they, they were, were different. They were about it. well, and it's and it I, in a it's good like way. a motorsports park country club is the easiest way to describe it. Yeah, so it's a country like club people for are people members like to race their cars. Yes, yeah, so like around. people are members and like they pay a fee <clears> and they've got their garages and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, but you know, uh, G Techniques Serum Summit rented out basically the entire place, mm. and uh, it was really cool to see. Like they let everybody that was there for G Tech, like nobody stopped, nobody asked, like. Let me see your wristband. Yeah, Let like, me what see. are you doing over here? Yeah, there was like, once that. you got in the gate, you were good to go. You can yeah. wander wherever Just you wanted to. Super laid back. And so, <coughs> I mean, pulling in, I mean, the first plan for that day um, was obviously to go and say hi to everybody at G-Technic and say hi to, you know, Eric. and people were setting um, up. Yeah. Kevin Davis was yeah. there, Andrew. All, all, the, all those there, guys. All guys. And we wanted to go say hi to them. But uh, that first day actually happened to be a day that we planned to wash Wednesday yep. um, oh. with Chris. Um, so Chris, Chris is, Cook. So Chris Cook, uh, his name is Particle Traction on Instagram. Um, and should we tell him what we shot yeah, with? Yeah, just tell him. All right. So um, he hit us up. He has an Ariel Atom 3. Uh, with a K20NA in it. And so uh, it was one of those, like, where how often do you get to do a Wash Wednesday on an Ariel Atom? Right. Uh, and how often do you get it's to do it? kind of hilarious. How anyway. often do you get to do it at a uh, motorsports park and actually get to drive the thing on the track and do a trackside wash, right? Yeah. So it was just a lot of things that, that made sense. But um, right off the bat, meeting Chris, you know, Chris is our people. He was just a super yeah. nice guy. Yep. Um, really funny. Just, just totally gets us really laid back. And uh, that's always, like, kind of the... The question is, when we go and shoot with these people we've never shot with, it's are we gonna, gonna be. are we gonna flow with these people? Are we not gonna <clears throat> flow? Do I have to kind of like you know prod them to, to like, talk? Yeah, talk, get <laughs> yeah. some answers out of them. No, he knew um, what he was talking about, so that was yeah, because he's helpful. <laughs> yeah, because his uh, his uh, business is gonna be it's 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 C three is his logo, um, and that's gonna be his upcoming business where he's doing pretty much anything and everything um, from car you know, care from detailing to. You know, private valet to all sorts of stuff, all kinds yeah. of stuff. Meaning, like he's gonna be, he wants to take care of some people's cars, do you know, do things yeah. for them. So it'll be yeah. like a car taker. Yeah. So uh, shout out to Chris. Yeah, Thank Chris, you so much awesome, for dude. you know hanging out with us and accommodating a little time at but, the track. But That's like a lot fun. of a lot of people, he was had a corporate job. Yeah. And has a has a few degrees, I believe, and yeah, really intelligent guy. He was into and, engineering. All yeah, that kind of stuff. and uh, bought his. Ariel Adam because mm-hmm. he uh, he had a I think said he said no he, had a, tr- he had a training experience there like yeah. it was a Adam experience they used to do at the track and I guess he did it once and immediately after that he went I have to get one of these I'm, yeah I'm looking actively yeah. ser- seeking one out well and it's <clears> and it's <throat> such a such a cool thing I mean seeing yeah. it in person it's just it's so strange because you know a lot of you guys listening to this have, have seen Top Gear and have seen Jeremy Clarkson mm-hmm. drive in one of these things or you've seen YouTube videos of the Ariel Adams um, but it is it's weird because it's a weird mix of a it's like <laughs> go-kart but it's a car but it also looks pretty cool and kind of aggressive and it's you know and it's a huge head turner I mean the yeah. people that were yeah. out there at this park um, first thing right off the bat we see a GT2 RS we see a, a Lamborghini Performante um, there was um, all sorts of radicals they had there. R- Radical RXCs is what they were. Mm. Um, all these just, I mean, amazing cars. But it was funny because he pulls up in the Atom, and everybody's like, well, "What's that? Like that's that's a head turner. That sounds <laughs> yeah, that cool." Was fun. And um, but we talked for a bit, did all the setup, and the wash Wednesday w- was, I mean, basically a trackside wash. Uh, we had brought our supplies, brought towels and things, and. Uh, but before we went out, we got to go and drive it um, and go do some rolling shots with Dane hanging out of the back of the Suburban, Woo! all strapped in, which was really cool. <laughs> and then he actually got to take us for a spirited drive. And each um, each of us, besides Levi, yeah. Levi uh, wasn't feeling you know up to yeah. the. I've been, okay. I was already getting car sick right <laughs> from shotgun from the, the ride. Suburban. Yeah, so. yeah. That's how I felt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was fun though. But that Atlanta Atlanta Motorsports Park. I mean, that whole track. 
such a classy place <clears throat> and really so cool place. clean. And yeah. I mean, you guys get to drive on the track and then after that he said, all right, now it's time to really, you know, tear some stuff up. Yeah. And so it's funny because that Ariel Adam only ha- it has a K20 in it, but I think it's only uh 200 and, you know, 200 it's horsepower. 240, he said. Yeah. 240. And um, it's got VTEC. So it's kind of funny because you're in a Honda, ba- basically, uh, but you're in a race car. So everything is, you know, carbon fiber. You have your, you know, your tubing uh, for the chassis, then uh, no power steering, no, you know, no ABS or anything like that. It's you just, don't need it. It's just a raw <laughs> little, little race car. But um, going around there and then cracking VTEC with that with that <laughs> intake right next to your head, what? it is yeah. deafening loud. And it the is, helmet helps. Yeah, it is just so cool though. Yeah. And I was just sitting there thinking, like, how do this I get is one? yeah, well, this is great <laughs> as a track car. Like, this is amazing. But I can only imagine, you know, how many people would be like, "What is that?" Like, yeah, you know, yeah. driving on the Dude, road. He said he, he daily drives it too, and he said he took it yeah. to Costco the other day. So yeah, he, he drove it from Atlanta all the way up to the track, which is over yeah. you know, an hour, an hour, hour and a half. And yeah, yeah. driving through traffic and everything, and you loved it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just such a cool car. So <clears> um, <throat> after that, after the drive, we went in, uh, did our whole wash thing, and uh, it was just cool because. Everybody was just everybody there, you know. Um, some of the people knew who we were. Everybody you know? was like everybody started showing up. People were landing. Yeah. People were just coming straight to the park because it was kind of a hangout. Like they were kind of having like a party. Like it wasn't there wasn't a lot. It wasn't like a real party. It was just kind of like, hey, everybody, we're still Impromptu here setting get up together. Yeah, stop by the park. <clears throat> so <clears throat> basically, people just yeah. stopped in like when they got into town to say hi. Yeah, you know, and um, well, so what was, was cool, cool is that I, I like the fact that people know what we do. You know, when it comes to filming and these videos and things like that, and how well, we were res- and how it. and how respectful everybody was. I mean, yeah. so like you know, Eric at G Technic was like, um, you know, we're like, hey, we want to film this, and he's just like, do you want to film in this awesome race bay where you have you know this whole thing? And we're like, yeah. absolutely. And he's just like, well, people are gonna be walking by, but I think everybody just wants to watch you guys. And so it was just cool because as we're doing this Wash Wednesday, a lot of people might not know this once the video comes out, but we pretty much had an audience yeah, at the whole time, at, at, you know, at every point of just people walking by and seeing the process, and uh, just a really cool experience. Rinseless wash, um, you know, got to use bead maker because when obviously want to make that yeah. car slick as uh, slick as possible. Um, but, uh, you know, we had a couple cameos in the video and, and all of that. But we wrapped that up and it, the, the rest of the day was truly just people like, you know, hey, grab grab a beer, grab a soda, you know, hang out, walk around, go mingle a little bit because it's going to get crazy once, you know, the rest yeah, of the public Yeah, everybody kind of got a chance to, like, say hi and talk yeah. and, you know, before two days Can of actual training and stuff. Tissue box over there? Sorry guys, I, I'm I'm a sick guy here. So I'm gonna try to blow my nose away from that. So mic. yeah, so then uh, we all got piled in the suburban, and we headed up to the Delonaga, Delonga Spa and Resort. That's so that's where uh, all the vendors and VIPs basically for the uh, G Technic Serum Summit uh, got to stay. It's a very picturesque little place. Beautiful place. I say little. It's um, actually pretty big. Yeah, it had uh, it a bunch of small cabins. Like eight cabins had a villa, uh, which is like a, a big house with a bunch of rooms, and then uh, an even bigger house with like a lodge, like a lodge style with like yeah. a rest. The main house mm-hmm. was like the restaurant, and there's bedrooms. Upstairs. Well, it was just very southern. It had that very southern yeah, vibe to it. Hills. And I mean, it wrap was... around porch with rocking chairs and wind and, chimes. And, and wind chimes and um, and really, I think the most breathtaking part about it is actually just walking into that initial, you know, front room. Uh, you know, because like to me, I'm thinking this was once a house. You know, yeah, a, this was of, someone's house. A, of you know, a, yeah. you know, a really nice house, and you walk in, but everything's been remodeled, and they have um, uh, shiplap all over. You know, all the walls and the ceiling. Yeah, and ship lap. You know, ship lap. Lap. Did I say lack? Yeah. Ship lap. <clears throat> lap. It's P. wood yeah. on wood on wood. Yeah, correct. It yeah. was yeah. it was a beautiful it. place, and you could smell yeah. it. it. Was great, but it was fun because everybody that was kind of there was staying there, so we all got a chance to have dinner together yeah. which was cool and then uh we got to have some fun uh ram from color lock was there and he had texted he called me and said hey i just landed i'm in my rental car i'm driving i'm just going straight to the resort i'm not going to stop at the yeah. thing and i said well we'll just meet you there and I'll, if you're still awake i'll call you because he had he had like a 16 hour 18 hour flight mm-hmm. um and he'd been up for like 24 hours but we were all so we're eating downstairs and uh all of a sudden, 
Ram heard all the noise because he was staying in the, one of the rooms and he's <laughs> like, like right he came upstairs. down. And he's like, hey guys. So I was like, I was getting ah, ready to. Te- I was literally texting him saying, we're downstairs if you want to come on down. And, yep. But so it was good seeing him. Uh, we got to have, you know, just it was good conversation with everybody. Yeah. Juan showed up. Uh, Juan Gonzalez of ASD. And you can never go wrong with Juan. Yeah. We have the one and only. But it was um, good. Everybody was just there. Like Keith came and sat down. With, like yeah. everybody. Like we just had a great, great dinner. evening. Yeah. yeah. Good dinner. Had some um, burgers. Yeah. We had that burgers. was uh, the only thing that I, I will say that I'd like. Oh, that was the funny. Dahlonega to uh, remedy for next year if we're staying there. Um, please, 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 for my friends here, Dane and Anthony, mm. oh. I'd like you to provide some beer. Mm. Yeah. And for myself and any of my other friends that don't drink, some sort of carbonated beverage. Yeah. Maybe one like the hat. You're so wearing. possibly <laughs> from the Pepsi lineup. Well, well, well. To give you an idea why Levi's <laughs> saying this, because when they came up to order, you know, place our drink order, the look um, in his eyes. <laughs> uh, they we said we said, hey, you know, um, you know, what kind of beer do you have? Oh, sorry, we don't have beer. We just have wine. Uh, and then Levi says, okay, well, you know, what kind of sodas do you have? Ah, sorry, we don't have any soda right now. All we have is water, tea, tea. and wine. And Levi's face, like the horror. I've never that has never like, come across. Ever. Like I thought he was gonna start crying. Like he didn't know what to do. Like, like he if like, they would have said like, if gulped. they would have said like, oh, we got Sprite and like Dr Pepper. Like I would have made do. Like I would have like, I'm like oh, I have a Dr Pepper or something. Like sure, yeah. I would have. But the fact that they just said water or tea, and I was like, uh, okay, yeah, right. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, that's to like, say, it's not that we're so stuck up we can't handle those no, options. It no, but I'd already like, drank all the water, and I'm like, I just don't want to drink water. Like, I need no. some flavor. If you yeah. guys are going to have a drink, like, I want to have a drink. We had no it's problem drinking wine. Yeah, you started drinking some wine. Yeah, we made the most that, of our that, bottle. That bottle went by pretty fast. Um, so after that, though, what we ended up doing, going back to our rooms, um, once we got our keys, and it was kind of cool because basically how this place works is they have you know the main lodge, and the lodge was a house, and they have rooms upstairs and things like that. And then away from that, you have a couple buildings going down a path. One is the spa area. One is kind of the general like laundry and maintenance they had a area. area. Yep. It's a few hundred feet feet down the path road and then down further they had eight cabins total so eight cabins and then on the other side of those cabins they had um another smaller lodge which they called the villa the villa yeah Mm -hmm. and so we got our keys to the cabins um you guys got number 17 right and we got lucky number 21 yeah and going into it, so right when me and Levi walked in, yeah. it was kind of funny because we, we walk in and everything's white. It looks just like that that lodge. It's beautiful. I mean, hardwood floors. Yeah, and all redone. Yeah. Bathrooms <coughs> look great. You know, the beds look okay, you know, and everything looked fine. Um, and then we uh, had talked to Dane and we said, you know, how's your place? He's like, oh, it's good. And we were, ex- we were showing pictures and he was like, your guys' looks different than mine. <laughs> and we're like, we're like, it's the same size building, literally like. 20 feet away like or 30 feet away nope. yeah ours is a little different yeah so um we basically that night we were tired we were yeah. out of it so we basically um went to go to bed super funny pretty much by the time i was laying in bed on my phone watching some youtube videos i'm like where's the tv in this place yeah you know how how dare them not have a tv as i'm watching you know video on my phone and i'm like sitting there i'm like well yeah, I think we're TVs in the woods. I was just saying, don't. you're in a cabin in yeah. the woods. Well, and the it's, expectation but, of a TV should be like yeah, Anthony's like my Wi-Fi is not working, and I'm <laughs> like it's working just fine on my side. So, well, that's what's just so funny is that I'm you know I'm all about camping, right? And I and I like doing that. But it's you still just, want DJ Roomba in the house. I well, understand. it's just strange that you are you know you're in a really nice little cabin, right? Oh, it was very in trendy a and pretty. trendy place. And then you're like, I'm away from technology, kind of, uh, but not really, because there's Edison bulbs all over the place. There is, you know, some nicer things. Yeah. There's a Keurig in the room, right, yeah. and all this. And then you're like, they didn't put a TV in here. Not that it matters, but 
It's just funny. <laughs> Perhaps less so cabin, more so cottage. That's yes. what, how I describe. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah. describe it as a cabin. It's, I'd it's, say yeah. they're listed as cabins, but it's really more of a cottage experience. Well, Your whatever that means. More to you. of a cabin from the seventies. But yeah, it was. It was just funny sitting there, you know, because what it we worked though it was nice. What we take yeah, not yeah. take for granted, but what we are kind of spoiled with, and so we're sitting there. I'm like, oh, I can't believe they don't have a TV in here. As I'm watching YouTube on my phone, and Levi's and on I've his. Got the re- Le- I've got the remote, and I'm turning the AC on. You're turning the AC on. You got your. <laughs> It's so hot luxury. in here. Let me turn you got it down. your tablet, and then I'm over in the corner making like a curry coffee. I'm like, ah, this place <laughs> is just <laughs> really slumming it here. No diet no. Pepsi no. or televisions. Oh. No, so it it was nice. Uh, next day we woke up in the morning. That's when we went to go check out Dane and um uh, and Dane's, Jeff's Jane Jeff's cabin, and they were right. It was different. It was the same floor plan. Correct. Just yeah. ours had been recently updated. Yeah. Yeah. So. so um, that not, was good to see. Not that and I felt just bad. It was let's just, just say at nine o'clock at night, when Jeff was handing out the keys, I'm glad we took twenty one. Heck yeah, yeah, I <laughs> so, like it. Uh, um, so next morning we packed up. Um, well, packed up. Well, we went, went to, breakfast to breakfast in the lodge, and the which breakfast was, free. was really a classy thing. And so yeah. what they had is uh, they had bacon, they had grits. I got to have real southern grits for the first time. I love grits. And I, I loved know it. That's not everybody's cup of tea. No, yeah, was I thought it was amazing. It was yeah. Well, it was just funny cuz like we pull up and I'm looking at this thing I'm like is this malta meal and they're or like oatmeal? Like, I'm like like grits, no this is grits. Man. I'm like oh how exciting. <laughs> um so the eggs were good, the bacon were good. They had yeah. a lot of coffee. Um but we got to meet up with everybody in the morning and it's kind of funny because um how do I describe this? It's like going to a um if you guys remember what 6th grade camp was. I don't know if you yeah, guys had oh, that. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah. It's exactly like that. You wake up in the morning and you get to be with your classmates and your friends and everybody that you see and it's kind of like all right we're going on our field trip everybody load up in this bus after this because we're going to the main event right yep yeah that's what it was like we all sat around ate breakfast and talked and then all right we'll see you there and they had shuttle buses for for those of you that are going to attend next year uh they have shuttle buses that you could hop in and get a ride to the to the motorsports park which was yeah. 40 minutes away mm-hmm. um it was only like 20 miles but it's mountain roads <laughs> it's so. 40 minutes because you're out in the middle of yeah yeah uh, it's mountain roads so um but it was great when then we loaded up headed over to the event got all set up and when we got there we got there at like 8 30 and it was the thing didn't start till nine and it was packed yeah we upstairs. pulled we, we pulled up, um, you know, because our stuff was set up the day before yeah. for that Wash Wednesday, and we get up there, and it was um, almost kind of a little overwhelming because there's so many people upstairs because they had a really cool little coffee set up there with a guy that flew in. From New um, York, a barista. Yeah, just to make coffee, which was super cool. Um, he also but, made a special G-Technic dry roast blend yeah, that they yeah. were selling, too, at the event. So. Yeah, and um, but the whole place was just set up awesome they pulled a car in there to do like a our demo on their wrap coding and all sorts of stuff uh but ultimately everybody kind of broke away for the classes and it kind of died down upstairs for a little bit so we can kind of focus on you know the few people that were left yeah. over that weren't doing the education stuff because the way they set it up is all the below us so upstairs there's like a big hall um and a big classroom yeah. and so that was open for like the vendors and people could come check out our booth and Look at G Technic stuff and Detail Link and Detailers Helper and Lake Country and stuff, and then uh, and like Ram from Color Lock was up there and and Doctor Color Chip and so all these companies we were up there and then below are a series of like ten garages yeah mm-hmm. and in each garage was a class so Rupes was ho- ho- holding a class uh, Shine Supply had a class KXK had a class uh, S Tech had a f- had a class going. PNS was doing one. PNS was doing one. Um, who's the other uh, a Tinder's company that was there? Um, Exo Shield. Yeah, Exo Shield mm-hmm. was doing a class, um, and then they had another series of garages, and there were more classes in there too, yeah. all the way down. So yeah, really cool. You could spend the day just taking some classes. Well, just that whole <laughs> park, um, being that there's all these garages downstairs, and then there's all the garages to the left and to the right of the main building, which basically look like storage units. But within those units, there is stores, there is uh, yeah. dino uh, shops, right, there's yeah. oh, there's it's tuners, crazy. there's parts, there's all sorts of stuff. So basically, it's kind of cool if you you know take your car out there. And you're like, I want to spend my day tuning my car and getting everything dialed in with an ECU. You can do that. If you're out on the track, you break something, you miss a wheel, something happens, uh, just go into the stores and pick it's up a new set or yeah, whatever. IRL. Yeah, it, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. crazy. <clears throat> and um, so 
what was really cool is during that day, we got to do um, some live videos. A lot of you guys might have seen those. And we got to just do a quick walk around and show people the place. Uh, but Eric um, <clears throat> from G-Technic came up to us and said, Hey, I want to see if you guys are down for this, uh, but we have a driver who is one of the lead uh, Porsche trainers uh, for the, their driving events here giving rides in the Radical RXC. Do you guys want to get in on that? Yeah. And we like, we like me and Dane look at each other and we're like, uh, yes, you know, absolutely. <laughs> How often so, do you get asked for that opportunity to um, so take it? Yeah, yeah, so, so this he, was on Friday. This was on we Friday. Were, so basically uh, Saturday, he's getting he's getting the he's tally. lining people up for Saturday. Yeah, so he says, "How would you guys like to do this?" And so we got all of our uh, our times put in for the next day. Uh, but it was just cool because me and Dane had just been drooling over these radicals and walking around seeing these things, and um, everybody was just talking about how crazy it is, you know, you know being <clears throat> a, a passenger in one of those. And so we knew we had to sign up for that. Uh, but following that, though, we had um, me and Dane kind of ventured off into a couple different training courses, said yep. hi to the guys down at Rupes doing the thing. Um, and uh, I think um, I mean, we hung out with Ram for quite a while. We, we know Ram is Ram's good people. Ram yep. is like if I don't know how to describe it, like he is he's like he's like us. Yeah. He like he could very well sit oh. at, in the fourth chair here yeah. and add a ton to this podcast in a uh, UK way <laughs> we will have him on sometime he's guaranteed. just he's so funny we, we made good friends with those guys last year at cinema <clears throat> and that's yeah. basically our after hours trying to wait for our booth set up that's yeah. how we ended ram up and, becoming ram fast and lars friends. are just yeah the ram and lars are yeah and and bodo and uh, bodo. Yolka, yolka they were great yep like we yeah we too but they're the reasons we have all these fishermen friends yeah. here it's because of our friends at color lock but. yeah um but after that though that's kind of when things started to to wrap up because um i you know the education only went on so long for that yeah. day and people really were just watching cars go around the track that was one of the funnest things is seeing yeah. oh, how many yeah. different All people because the <laughs> there was other people that were driving like yeah just there signing Miatas, up there's there's going GT3, driving there were, uh, gtrs there's yeah. mini coopers there was like all kinds of stuff honda like a guy some... in what looked to be like a uh Small scale version of like a Porsche 917, except it was scaled down and probably had like a four cylinder in it. It was going fast though, but they yeah. were all like crazy cars of every shape. Yeah, it was all kinds. There was race cars size. and then just people running there. And I mean, our suburban was cars. on the track. Yeah, so there was true. that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it wasn't too long after that that they basically said, hey, it's time to wrap it up and we are heading back out for dinner. Yeah. And back at the lodge. And we had dinner at the lodge that was paid for. Uh, by one of the sponsors, I believe PNS and Buff and Shine yeah. covered that. Um, so we got back to the to the building, went up to to the ho- main house for dinner and uh, had dinner again. Same kind of thing though. This time we just Artisan yeah we pizza. had some pizza, uh, <laughs> yeah. but it was uh, it was good. They uh, couldn't belt it out fast enough. They basically, they, they, that that was that was the challenge. only thing was that they were putting out three pizzas for thirty people, and, and there each, was only each eight one was slices. on like a wood board that was about the size of this yeah. license plate. Yeah. So needless to say, not everybody got a slice when the first pizzas came out. No. Because uh, they didn't have enough. And then they're like, oh, crap, we got to get these other ones out. So they started going. Everybody got to eat. Uh, this time they did have soda. Yeah. So I was able to get a Diet Coke at least. I think they were just out briefly and then I think, stopped. I think they didn't plan on all of us being there. <clears throat> yeah, well. probably not. <laughs> and then, uh, but yeah, so that was good. And we just, we hung out with Ram and Tinder. Uh, a, Tinder a Tinder from... Uh, what exo shield Shield. Mm -hmm. so it was good so we sat uh, a tinder had some beers in his room so he came and went and got him and brought him was the best he's like yeah they don't have beer i think i have something up my room we're like oh you don't have to he's like hold on he comes back down with modellos for all of us it's like yeah ice cold delicious modellos no a tinder super cool guy hung out with ram and us and everybody and it was yeah Keith and Jeff sort of split a yeah. bottle of wine together, and the two of them were going to town on <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. We just a lot of good conversations. We <laughs> talked a lot about social media. We talked a lot about just business in general. Um, you know, getting into that, and we know uh, William from um, uh, Lux, Miami Lux, Miami Lux. He he, you know, he had, he wanted to learn a lot about you know all things social media. So we had a good yeah. talk on that. Um, after that, though. Pretty tired. Went to bed. Um, I think it was the second night there is when we realized that the beds were not as comfortable as that yes. we thought. The Best Western beds were far more comfortable. They spoiled us. And, it, and I don't know if it was because of know, the, the new it. style of our beds compared to yours. They're kind of just like Ikea bed frames. Mm. Um, and maybe they just hadn't been fully broken in because like 
I felt like if we ever tried to roll to the edge, you would just fall off. <laughs> oh, like yeah. it kind of sloped. Yeah, like it, it was just peaked in the middle, kind of. Oh, like yes, that. roll. So yeah, like, roll straight off, and <clears throat> um, it was. So we got so an. You kind of o- had to try and lay in the center and build a wall of yeah. pillows around yourself. So you got an fall off of okay night's sleep there, <laughs> um, but every morning we had to wake up at uh, six a.m. Six a.m. Because so for those of you uh, listening in in Mountain Time Zone. That was 4 a.m. Boise time yeah. every yeah. day. We were not used to doing we, that. We hadn't really had much time to calibrate. So, yeah, yeah waking up again and uh, heading to the lodge again for breakfast. And it was kind of the same thing. You know, everybody, you know, it's like getting up before the day of school and going and getting, you know, all of your stuff. And so uh, everything from orange juice, apple juice, you know, cranberry eggs, bacon, juice. cranberry juice, um, and more grits, which breakfast was delicious. Breakfast was great. Breakfast yeah. was awesome. Every we loved time. it. It's awesome. Um, but then the next day we headed in yep. back to the park. Yep, and this was the start of an actual upstairs education day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which meant that the entire day was going to be filled with speakers um, talking, including and us. We it was starting at nine a.m. and we were going on at about ten fifteen. Yeah, yeah. So uh, first folks got up, gave their speech. It was mostly G Technic giving mm-hmm. their you know update for the year and what's coming out. What's was that on be Sunday new. or Saturday? That was on Saturday. Okay, so. They kind of gave what what was going to be happening, um, and in between the classes, like we'd be manning our booths, and yeah, and people could mingle and check out other booths, <clears throat> and it was very casual. Yeah. Um, well, and our booth had a line of sight to everything going yeah, on upstairs. Yeah. So. And then we got up, did our presentation, and I was thankful that uh, we <laughs> it had ended a up packed... being just you mainly. We yeah, kinda hung off to but, the side. Uh, but I was thankful you. we had a packed house for that. Yeah. Like that. It yeah. felt good to see that many people sit in chairs waiting yeah. to oh, listen to us talk. Full. So that was really cool. Um, and everybody was awesome, asked some great questions. Uh, I love that, you know, for, for us and for those of you that are listening to the Rag Company podcast daily, like you guys are fans and watch all our stuff, it may not be news to you, but to us it still surprises us when there oh, are people yeah. that still don't know about good microfiber they still don't know that it exists or that we have really good pricing or yeah. any of that kind of stuff so <laughs> we'll learn that again later in our trip <laughs> yeah but it's just like people it's good to know that this like because for us i feel like sometimes like we're gonna run out like we're gonna get like everybody knows <laughs> everybody knows we're done <clears throat> like we don't have to keep telling people because everybody knows Nope, as it turns out, it there is always not seems to like be that so far. Yeah, there always <laughs> seems to be more people. So that was really cool because everybody got to talk and chat with us yeah. afterwards. And that was the day. Like, we literally, every manufacturer got to get up and give a little talk. I got to, I hung out during uh, Lake Country, during Color Lock, during Buff and Shine, um, through part of the PNS talk. Like, it was, it was fun to be able to sit through all that and listen uh, to all the different speakers. And I mean, that's, that's, how you learn, yeah. right? So yeah. Yeah. that was cool. And then uh, about 3 o'clock rolled around, or 2.30, and you guys had to suit up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that was pretty cool. So we basically, I mean, uh, Dane, if you want to explain the process. I'm, I'm going go <clears> to <throat> go to the bathroom real quick. Okay. Let's right. talk about that. Well, before I do, perhaps I get another fisherman's friend here because my voice Which one is do you starting want? to. Ooh, is that mint? Spearmint? Spearmint? I will do spearmint. I'll start it off, and Dane can jump <clears> in. So yes, please. basically what we end up doing is – um, Eric came up and said, hey, you guys are good to go. Uh, get downstairs. You guys have to go to the shop um, that, that is located next to the building. Uh, it was called, what was it called? Um, uh, nah, I don't remember. Precision. Div- uh, I don't know. Something, something driving. Something, I don't, distributed I something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, something. yeah. It was a driving shop is what it was. And so um, you'll see uh, Randy um, Popst, right? Oh, yeah. No, well, that was that was uh, yeah during our thing when we were watching other people going around the track and stuff. That was during our day with the Ariel Adam. Correct, but he but he is a uh, not a rep for this for this shop, but he's like somebody that does a lot of work with that shop for social media and stuff. People people who know like you know car magazines, online internet car video stuff like that. You probably know Randy Popes. Yeah, and uh, he just walked out there on the balcony with us. We didn't know he was there or anything. He just popped out and looked over. Was like. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Well, and Dane, was, Dane was like, Dane was like, he's like an older version of you, Anthony. I always like, joke, what I'm like, Anthony, you and Randy kind of look alike. I think <laughs> just a little glasses? bit. You're like a younger I don't version. Know, what does that even mean, Dane? your face and you're a little younger version of him. So. Okay. Um, anyways. Internet commenters, let us know. Do you think Anthony looks like he will eventually grow into becoming Randy Popes? It's not a bad thing. He's got a good looking <laughs> wife, you know. 
Congratulations. <laughs> um, so going from there, though, what we ended up doing, we went to the shop, we suited up, um, and the the suiting up process it was just <clears throat> it was just super funny because you have a lot of these guys um, that that are, that signed up for this ride along that have never been in a suit before, they've never put on a helmet before, so where everybody was kind of struggling getting everything put together. But uh, once you got the suit on, you would have to get your brace, your neck brace, and then your helmet that all latches into itself. Uh, following that, we started walking over to the um, actual track there, and it was kind of one of those like weird experiences where, you know, you feel nervous, but you're excited, but you also don't know how it's gonna, you know, what what it's gonna be well, like. There were several people leading up to that who are like, "Oh, it's gonna rearrange your guts." It's yeah, gonna, oh, yeah. Your everybody brain was, is gonna yeah, need to They were talking up a talk for you guys. Yeah, and well, they're, they're like trying to psych you out, <laughs> but at the same time, they're also like trying to get you excited. Yeah, and in your head going. <clears throat> How much of this is true? How much of this is just complete like fabrication? And what what's my experience going to be? Because maybe yeah. I'll experience it differently than someone else. I just didn't want to throw up. I mean, which yeah. I've I've never thrown up on anything. Well, and Eric and I... was joking, like walk out in the parking. I was like, oh yeah, don't walk over there, yeah. Willie. Uh, he. Uh... Yeah. Well, and mind <laughs> you, all of us <clears throat> were still feeling good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and Jeff was the only one that was still like kind of sick. And yeah, he was on cold. So this medicine. was a brief window but in the time. The three of us are all still in great shape, yeah. like yeah. technically. So you guys were perfect to go. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so I mean, so I was kind of nervous, but I was excited. So he pulls up in the Radical RXC, and this thing is just absolutely brutal. Six hundred and fifty brake horsepower. It's twin the turbo same engine as the new Ford GT. Yeah, it's yeah. an EcoBoost tw- EcoBoost twin turbo V six. Yeah, so six fifty horse, but you're talking in this in this platform, this chassis, it weighs less than a Ford GT. Oh, absolutely, it has more aero than a Ford GT, which already has crazy yeah. arrow. But everything insane about downforce, this, insane everything, and you are in a race car, so it's like a Le Mans prototype racer. So he, he pulls up in it, and um, everybody's like, "Well, good luck." And so it, the, one of the biggest struggles is actually getting into the damn car. I mean, you really didn't know because you, you have to step over the whole, you know, door area, what you would call a yeah. door area, step into the seat. And you're stepping into a carbon fiber seat, right? And me, like, <laughs> like in, oh. in, in the OCD is like, you know, is, is, is like killing me because I'm sitting here thinking, I'm standing on this, there's dirt on this carbon fiber, it's scratching into it. Like, I'm sitting here like, oh my God, I feel so bad, but this is what everybody's been doing. So you step in, you got to kind of turn yourself around and then literally just slide into <laughs> this. Kinda- Pirouette in place, and then you get in. Slip How in. close was your left knee to the entire control stack? Oh, like yeah. All of the stuff. Like, my left knee was behind it. Yeah. Because it kind of came down off the well, dash. Well, the driver was like, don't, you know, be careful, because if you hit this switch, you're going to break <laughs> something. And yeah, so you, you either had to be a really slender person or somebody that's really, you know, can, knows what they're doing because sliding into this, it's like sliding into like a mummy sleeping bag. Yeah. Like you're tight. Yeah. And uh, once you get in, and that's when you have to put your seatbelt on, and it's a, uh, was I think it was a three point harness, is what it was. It was basically like having, um, it was basically like a disc, and then each. You know, yeah, it was. A, I think it was a three a point side of it. And once you tighten everything <clears throat> down, and so it was kind of like right sitting in it for the first time when it was when I was like, all right, this is about to get pretty crazy. And right oh, when you have a Hans device on too, by yeah. the way, they made they made you wear that so you don't go snapping your neck. Yeah. <laughs> so right from the second that thing started taking off, because I was first in the car, um, the gearing, right? You hear that transmission, you feel that kind of that that <coughs> want to go, and um, he's putting around in the first corner. The first quick corner he takes, he starts getting on it a little bit, and it was. The transmission whine, it was the sound of the turbos, it was the instant traction you felt, but it was also that low center of gravity because you're just so low to the ground. And right when he took the first cor- corner, I'm like, holy crap, prepare yourself, prepare for, you know, I mean, like, be prepared. You're clenching. But like, no, but I was like, let it happen. But I was like, because I asked him, what do I, what should I do? He's like, just relax, put your hands on your, on your knees and don't fight it because you're gonna have so much more fun if you just let it, you know, let go. And I said, well, as long as I'm not letting go of like my bowels, you know, (laughs) I think I'll be, I'll be fine. Um, (coughs) right. That first corner, bam, first gear, he gets on it. And it was like, dude, going into hyperspace. It was insane. The combination of the turbo, the combination of that traction, but then also, it just felt good seeing how confident this guy had been because he had been doing this all day long, you know, setting these, you know, record, I don't want to say record laps, but he was just setting these really good times. 
and it was Dane. Dane, you were next. Just give, give, tell, tell me your thoughts on what what you felt like. The accelerator, I mean, bar none, fastest car I've ever ridden in, hands in my down. life. Yeah, hands no down. Question no question about that. And, I mean, you previously <coughs> had ridden in Adam LZ's BMW, but that was like, you know, street this car. Is, this is different, 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 different because this, this is, the, people always, yeah. like, they look and they go, well, that race car is less horsepower than that street car. How come that race car is faster? And it's because of all the other factors that yeah. go into it. The low weight, the aero, all that stuff. This car, for one thing, I will say, people kind of go, oh, about the Ford GT sound. It sounded better in the car than it did yeah. from outside, so I'll give it that. Oh, yeah. The transmission was... wine, all that stuff, it's an experience. It's like an orchestra of just speed, insane stuff going on around you. But when you get pulled out of that first corner, it's a long, it's a big sweeping bend, and then you're just kind of going right into the track. They give you a second to speed up before you have to do any turns, and that feeling... I will never forget that. Oh feeling. no, it was... it was like taking off in a fighter jet. It <clears throat> it's that that zero g feeling you get in your stomach when you're like you're floating. You know that kind of like oh a yeah. plane is descending yeah. really fast, something like that. It was like that, except it's you getting sucked into your seat. And some people say, oh, I've been in drag cars that do that. Yeah, but drag cars won't turn a corner like this did. Yeah, and it he was, was taking corners at the same speed. <laughs> So you're taking corners at 130, 140 miles an hour in some cases. Well, Insane. We felt like you, you know you'll feel you'll feel the car like the, you know you'll, how do I explain this? It was <clears> when <throat> he was on it, you know, full gas. Right, is when you felt the safest. When he would let off the gas and you'd be you know going around a turn or he'd be trail braking. When you would feel it kick out a little bit is when I felt like the sketchiest. Right. Yeah. But so basically, I was like. The faster he goes, the safer I feel because right. of the grip and the downforce. Yep. But there's a couple turns where you know he goes from a straight into a turn, and he just slams on the brakes, and you are – how do I explain this? Your <laughs> feet are about to go through the damn floor, and you're about to start flintstoning that thing because yeah. of just how <laughs> much that breaks. And it's a very – almost I don't want to say a sick feeling, but it, it's just insane. And then coming out of that corner – how fast that thing shifts, right, was already crazy. Um, <laughs> but there's a couple turns in that where he can kind of go up and over this hill, and you definitely feel that that sense of, like Dane was talking about. This where track you, has elevation changes that are pretty big significant, so the hills elevation. are real. Like you peek side. over yeah. one and you can't see. And yeah, you, what, and you feel like you're floating. You feel light and you feel like, yeah. you know, like that's not real life. Um, but I think the craziest part was during the whole ride, you have a, um, a a dash in the middle there that shows electronically and LCD and everything that's going on, right? It shows your braking. It shows your, your boost and all of that. And yeah. I'm sitting there coming around one straight. You know, I'm trying to, like, kind of pull my neck to see what's <laughs> going on. And I'm looking at that, and I see, um, you know, full throttle. I see the, you know, the I see 77, right? Is just I see, like, this fluctuating number around 70-something. And I'm like... What is that? I'm like 77 miles an hour. We're going a lot faster than 77. And then I look closely, closely, and it said PSI. And I'm like, we're hitting 77 pounds of boost in this thing. And for reference, like my Evo hits 24 pounds of boost, right? And it feels already pretty quick. Times that by three. 77 pounds. <laughs> it's pretty insane. And then that's when I looked at the miles per hour because you had to find it on this list. I see 140 as we're in this turn, and I'm like, "Holy crap!" And then as it starts to straighten out, I start oh, hearing the tur the turbo <laughs> spools, and I'm like, "Oh my god! Like, what's happening?" And then bam, I saw 160. It was like mid 160 something, in that straight, yeah. and then straight into another <clears throat> break. And yeah. it seemed and before like you guys straight. got in the car, like I was upstairs on the balcony watching, taking video of you guys yeah. going around. Yeah, and they were saying they're like, "It's." He's been hitting consistently almost 167, 168 on that straightaway. Yeah. yeah. As he passes by everybody, he was doing one. It, I was going like, to say, I saw that. Miles so, yeah. Yeah. He definitely was. It yeah. was, um, and and it's crazy because, you know, you, I don't know how it's to It's a tight technical this. track. It, it is. It's not it's a very small high track. speed track it's a small the way track. a traditional one. The only reason it's a high speed track for this car is because it's capable of doing that. But yeah. any other car would struggle to get over a you know 100 120 anywhere on that track yeah and we uh it was funny because right when i got out of the car right when i got out of the car i look over at him and i'm like hey i really want you to push it for my friend over here um you know i just said he's mr safe and you know let him live a little bit and he was like 
got it. I'm you're, like, you're, telling, you're like, he's basically James May. Okay? Yeah, pretty much. He's the James <laughs> May. And so um, he took you around. And I think both of us, by the time that ride got done, we couldn't stop smiling. It no, was like you guys a, were you guys were buzzing giggling. After. Yeah, you yeah. Were so excited. I was like, I, was... I felt, I felt like you know, I want to say I felt high, but it was like a adrenaline rush yeah. to where I'm like, I feel like I'm on top of the world, and going and taking the stuff off. All I wanted to do was go back over there and see people's reactions getting mm-hmm. out of it, right? Because mm-hmm. I want to yeah. know if they're as happy as I was, and I can't say that for everybody. I know Mark Elliott got out and he was kind of like, uh, that was <laughs> a lot, you know. Keith got out. Keith was like, that was that was. Pretty pretty fast, pretty yeah. quick. And I'm like, yeah. And well, you, you end up David with a bunch Patterson of tough jumped guys. out and was like, oh my gosh, that was great. that was amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which Jason is works so really. funny with David Patterson. He's like Mr. Muted when he's talking to you about technical stuff, but you get him talking about something like Hondas or something, and all of a sudden he turns. It's like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, guy. It's like, yeah. whoa, where'd that it come great. from? It's awesome. So no, we were yeah. uh, we were on another level, and that was where um, you know we told Jeff when he's feeling better next year he has to do oh, yeah. has that experience that. because yeah. it's it's unlike anything you know that we've done, and um, and they do offer that as a as a thing. I believe it's um, anybody can do it. It's a yeah. hundred and fifty bucks yeah. for two laps yeah. is what it is. You basically and rent the fire suit, the Hans device, and the helmet. Yeah, uh, and then the laps. Are if free. you go do that. 150 sounds like a lot. Worth it's it. It's worth it. Worth it. Worth it. Hands down. Like, yeah. absolutely worth it for how much fun that was. And Like um, nothing else. So we we got to do that. Um, and then we were really- Saturday I mean, night was, uh, was, that was basically, Saturday night was, we had to go to the winery after that. Um, right. But, but we went, we yeah. left early. We kind of closed down early um, because it was basically the end of the show. So yeah. we packed up. Packed all our stuff, put it in our crate, got our booth knocked down, all that stuff after you guys got done doing the race, yeah. r- the drive. Um, we got everything packed, put away, and then uh, we headed into Dahlonega with Keith and Justin Lobato mm-hmm. and Juan, and we found a little little tavern, tavern called Spirits <laughs> uh, that uh, may or may not be haunted. It was fun. I it loved was, it. It was, it was really a cool little place. Fun. I loved that it. Town, it. That was town was like, it, that town was very uh, old. It was a very high concentration of antique stores. Yeah, eighteen thirty three, <laughs> which was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it was and, like uh, it, it, I felt they like they were doing ghost tours and stuff. I felt like I was in a Vampire mythical Diaries. teen drama, and I loved it. <laughs> and I was like, holy crap, you know, how can I get powers and how can I live here how and about, be? You just start watching Supernatural, like, like a three hundred year old vampire, you know, hanging out with these cool kids. You know, <laughs> I just want to like go to high school and be like, yeah. you know, hey guys, I'm I'm in high school too. And they're like, how old are you? I'm like, <laughs> don't worry about it, man. So um, no, we went well, there, we did that, hung out, had some. You guys had and, some beers. We walked around. Then from there, we yeah. walked around. Around and got to check out everything else, and um, it was a cool little town. It was yeah. just a cool town where I think realistically it could totally be a destination place, not yeah. destination, but to the point where if you wanted to go visit there for the day, plenty of stuff to do oh, between yeah. antique stores and everything oh, else yeah. they have there. No, like next year if we go, like I'd like to spend some time in that. I'd town. like to hang around like there. To go there was around. an ice cream shop. There was an ice cream so, shop. Yeah. I was very excited to see that. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, but yeah. Then we headed back to the yeah. cabins, changed real quick, regrouped, so to speak, and then. Uh, Headed over to the winery, which is like five minutes away. Yeah, and it close. was cold outside. It was oh, really so cold, cold that night. It was um, like Boise cold. It was yeah. Boise cold. But it, we walked in, and it was yeah. a big, great room in this winery. Uh, we had uh, barbecue. Yeah, um, lots of good stuff. There's drinks. Lars had made it. And he flew in only for the one day. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, he was going to do some other stuff while he was in town, but he had flown in for just the, that end of the show. Yeah. <laughs> and we're like, oh, man, you missed it. But he showed up for the open house the next morning. But it was yeah. fun. So we got to see Lars. So, again, Lars is the reason all these fishermen friends yes. are sitting here. Thank you again, um, So we hung out with Ram and Lars and everybody. It was good to see the whole team. You know, everybody was there. It was fun to just, you know, go back and talk with everybody and catch up with the people that we maybe had talked to in the first day or the second day or whatever. It was just, it was a good event and everybody was invited to that event. Uh, So they gave out awards, they gave out door prizes. There was raffle. (coughs) There was, was, yeah, there, there, there was just a lot going on. And, but I think the, the, I don't want to say it was the hardest part about it all. Um, was if it was nicer weather, there would have been more people being able to go out in the oh, yeah, you know in the, the big, there was a huge deck there was huge yeah, deck and huge patio interior but, was packed and the patio was like 
for people. Yeah, because it was just so cold. But what was really cool, yeah. though, is seeing, um, you know, it, it's funny because we look at G Technic as, as as a very big brand, right? And, and they are a big brand in the coding industry, and they do have some fantastic chemical products. Um, but seeing how much everybody, how close everybody was in yeah, this yeah. particular event, you know, like family kind of thing, giving each other crap, making fun of each other, um, you know, and these are people all over the country yeah. that collectively, you know, are having a good time. And, and I think it's because of events like the Serum Summit where, you know, people, like-minded people get to gather together and not only talk business and talk detailing and all of that, but also just get to hang out with family, you know? Yeah, you know, yeah. And I don't it was know. It's fun to be a part of it. Yeah, like yeah. like you said, it was like summer camp, where we got to go hang out and see all our friends. You yeah. know, like that was cool. And then it's we a went different back. feeling event, which is cool. Yeah. Well, then that night we just went back to the hotel, went to bed. Everybody got to sleep in because breakfast wasn't going to be served till nine a.m. Yep. Instead yeah. Instead of six a seven a.m. Yeah. So we all got like two hours extra sleep. We got up, ate breakfast, kind of chatted with everybody, and then checked out. Yeah. And then we headed down to Alfreda. Uh, which is where the G Technic um, headquarters was, right? I think that's is where. that where. Anyway, we went <laughs> did farther down into Atlanta, like towards Atlanta, <clears throat> but I think it was Alfreda that we went to. But anyway, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I think that's where the hotel was. But no, it was the hotel else was in G-Technic. Roswell. Well, it kept saying Alfreda Best Western. No, it's uh, anyway. It was anyway. Roswell. <laughs> I'm saying. stuck in technical. I anyway, don't know my way so we headed to the G Technic HQ, and that was cool. Everybody kind of came in. They had a big open house. So we got to see, you know, their warehouse. We got to see the wrap shop in the back. We got to see, um, you know, look at all the products. We got to spend time with Rob and Stuart from G Technic and and hang out with those guys. They were over from the UK. Yeah. Um, we got to have lo- great conversations with them. Fun to talk to Lars and yeah and uh, and Ram. Yeah. Uh, from Color I think we had more time to c- uh, talk with them there. Yeah. And then uh, they had to leave, and we were going to grab lunch. So we went to lunch with David Patterson and the boys from KXK. So. Noxie, yeah. Kilmer, and Andy. And mm-hmm. so uh, we went and found a barbecue joint, had some barbecue with them. Good. Talked about some uh, future video plans, which yeah. I think you guys are going to um, really like. Love. I mean, yeah. It's going <laughs> we'll we to be We're going to have so much fun with this future stuff and all the stuff we've been kind of been planning because uh, come April 1st, we're going to have kind of the. Um, uh, the superstar meet here at the Rag Company. Yeah, um, April Fool's Day. April Fool's Day with a lot of our friends. And we've just been brainstorming. We want to do something out of the box, super creative. And um, we definitely want to film some stuff with the KXK boys yeah. and the rest of everybody else. And so we have really cool idea. We'll probably uh, maybe talk about it a little bit more as cl- as that comes closer. I haven't uh, seen anything else like it. <laughs> no, it'll, it'll be fantastic. <laughs> and we uh, – but that – Lunch was great. We yeah, lunch was great. And then uh, we headed over to Andretti's in Roswell. Yeah. Um, so that we could do some uh, go-karting. And that was fun. So we went up, did a go, did some go-karting with everybody. You guys can see that on Facebook. Just Jason the beat pictures. like all of us. Yeah. Jason if you Kilmer. Imagine that. Beat everybody. He put the fastest lap down uh, out of everyone. And even he was laughing. He was like, I was steering with my knees <laughs> and my and one hand. Like, You're like I was thanks. Rub it in more. Yeah. Um, so that was impressive, and then uh, well, we just got two other out. guys on the track who were yeah, those really guys were jerks. aggressive. I hate those guys. guys. <laughs> they were mean. There's two other guys on the track that weren't part they of weren't our group. They weren't part of our group. They were just they were just they were into rubbing and bumping. And they're the yeah. guys who like wait until Rubin's afterwards, racing. and yeah. they're like watching to see their stats at the end, yeah. and they're like bickering with the guy running the booth on the timing and stuff. It's like, man, these guys take it a little yeah. too seriously. Yeah. So. Uh, then we hung out. Then we went down to the bar there, and you guys got some drinks. We got yep. some desserts <laughs> and uh, some, some cookie soup. Yeah, and then we just headed back to our to the Best Western yeah. in Roswell. We just we had jet rented a room there. <laughs> we liked it so much, we got it twice. Yeah, and uh, so that worked out really well. Uh, but it was about six thirty seven or so mm. when we got there, and we just chilled out for the rest of the night. Yeah, we just hung out. Uh, Anthony went to the Taco Bell and got himself some tacos. Yeah, I did. Late and uh, yeah, late night tacos because it was in the parking lot next to the uh, Olive Live Garden. Miles, Anthony. And uh, <laughs> but we just hung out like the whole goal. Like there was such a crazy long trip. Yeah. Um, and we had given ourselves till Monday. We probably could have gone home Sunday <clears throat> night. Um, yeah. And next year maybe we will. Um, but so this night yeah. was just a kind of a chill out hangout. Um, and Monday morning got up, had breakfast in the hotel, and 
uh, went to basically head back to the airport. We stopped by this little yeah. car company, yeah. said hi, checked out this guy's car shop. California, California car company. Car company. Yeah. Uh, checked out some of the old cars he's got. It's a pretty cool little place. And then we just took our time, headed back, headed to Lenny's, had uh, some sandwiches, Lenny's sandwich shop there. I love the the music playlist. There was the <laughs> mid to, so mid, mid, mid 2000s, it's My Chemical Romance, uh, it was Lincoln pop, Park, pop all the way. Played some yellow card. And I'm, so I'm sitting there eating this like Italian sandwich and I'm like, what is playing on the, you know, what is, what is the soundtrack right now? Yeah. And it was all these throwbacks, man. Yeah. It so was confusing hearing like, yeah, Jimmy at World Bleed American, but you're eating like this Italian <laughs> pastrami sandwich, whatever. And, like yeah. looking around going, none of the guys in here look like the kind of guys I yeah, would and expect it's like to be a chain, So it's to... almost like a Subway. Yeah. But yeah. it's seven well, and a half times better than Subway. 7.49 sure 7. times. 7.49 <laughs> times better than Subway. But it was good. It was good. Yeah. So I think up up for and, and that was the day that I started feeling like crap. You I was started already fe- feeling you're, like You were already feeling like, like crap. I, I got it. I started feeling it Sunday when we were driving mm. to Geotechnic <clears throat> headquarters. I was yeah. like, man, I think I'm getting something. Dude, and it was, for me, it was that runny, it was a runny nose that I didn't even know. It, it, this is embarrassing. It was one of those where, like, my nose is just a faucet. I'm like, yeah. is water yeah. just coming? You know, and I would sit there like, oh my God, how embarrassing, right? Like, yeah. I need tissues. And, uh, I I started to feel it, and I'm like, crap, dude, we're about to get on this flight. And Jeff's like, sorry about that. You know, I'm yeah, starting. Jeff he's like, was feeling better. He's starting to feel better. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, <clears throat> if he's feeling better, whatever we got, it's probably just like a 48 hour, yeah. you know, quick cold situation. Um, let's, hope. let's let's hope, right? I Fingers feel crossed. worse today than I did yesterday. Yeah, same. Uh, no, so but we, anyway, um, we uh, we drove to the airport, um, dropped off the car, g- did all of that, and I think all of us were just done. Yeah, was, we were just done. Yeah. Time to get home. Yeah, exactly. What it was. So we uh, <clears throat> got got to the airport, found our spot. Jeff took a nap. I got some little rubber balls for the kids to bouncy balls to play with, which I they loved a... this morning. They got them and they loved yeah. them. Um, you got Katie a hat. Yeah, yeah. Um, we grabbed some mount, uh, some monsters, and some sodas, and we just sat and waited for our flight. Hopped on our first flight. Made it to Minneapolis. Uh, <laughs> and not that's too when bad. Things went a little not, slower. That wasn't a bad flight. That no. was a two-hour quick flight, so, easy. But Minneapolis, we were like, "Wow, we've only got an hour, maybe even yeah. forty-five minutes before we get on our plane." <laughs> well, we, well, I was. So I don't know what was going on. I was just feeling like super feel anxious, yeah. and I think yeah. it was probably the co- the combination of me feeling sick, um, and then also just I'm just over done. traveling done. right now, and yeah. so um, and we do we notice that like the ride home is always like. The, like it's pretty tough. It, it's it, just it's the like hardest. We want we want to be over with, and so I was just feeling super anxious on this plane. Like I was very jittery, and it was one of those situations where I'd like look around and be like, "How much time has passed? Crap! It's only been two minutes. I've yeah. watched every single movie on this damn Delta thing at this point <laughs> because we've gone so we've many gone flights. so much in the last like we literally like." That's why when you put on dodgeball, I was like, ah, I should probably watch dodgeball. Yeah, like, like I, I need to watch something that I need to watch. Well, I, you I'm know. like, I'm like watching disaster movies and stuff. He's like, I can't be watching that right now. I'm yeah, way too I jacked need, up. Yeah, I can't. I need to calm down. And so, um, anyways, so that flight so after Atlanta we landed, to you know, I was like, that really wasn't that bad in comparison to what we were about to go right. on. So, so we went and had, we went and got food. And we were like, all right, we got like maybe 45 minutes, an hour if we're lucky yeah. to eat. So we had a sit down at a really nice little place called Republic. the Republic in Minneapolis. And it was great. It was, uh, you know, everything was awesome. It was yeah. good. Food was great. Service was great. We got done and we're like, cool. Well, we've got like three minutes before they start boarding. Let's head over to our gate, which is right there. And as soon as we get up, my phone vibrates. Our flight's delayed 30 minutes. Yeah. Oh. And we're like, crap. Because that was the one good thing we were looking forward to is that we were getting home at like 10, 15. 10, yeah. It was like, this is going to be sweet. We're going to get home at 10. This is going to work out great. And so we head over to the bo- to the thing. We sit there. We wait. They come over to the announcement. We're waiting on the stewardesses. They haven't flown in yet. So we're waiting until they get in. They've got to deboard their plane, get everybody off, grab their gear, head over to this plane, get this plane prepped. Then we'll start boarding. 45 minutes later... They bored us. So we sat for 45 minutes extra. So now we've been delayed in Minneapolis for an hour and 45 minutes. That was our layover, right? Yeah. We only had a one hour layover. We're like, wow, this is amazing. Now we have, an, we're laid over for an hour and 45 minutes. We get on the plane. We sit on the plane. Everybody's in there. They're like, all right, everybody, let's turn your phones off. Get ready. We're uh. cabin doors closed. We're moving. 
We moved for about five minutes yeah. and then stopped, shut the engines off, and proceeded to hang out for another hour. Because we were in line with like 20 other planes. Because yeah. they were de-icing the planes. I can't keep doing this, people. I can't. <laughs> the thing is, is I'm already anxious. I'm already bottled up, and I'm already psyched myself up to get on this stupid plane, <laughs> and the fact that it just sits there. And you know what? I'm blaming all these damn expos and all these things going on in the wintertime. Why would you plan a detailing <laughs> event in the wintertime? That is the stupidest <laughs> thing ever. Well, but hold on. And they do that because they're detailing during the warm months. I don't care. Yeah. Make and, time. And it was <laughs> warm, technically, where Te- we were. Oh, yeah. technically, yeah. <laughs> well, no, well, Minneapolis, so... Or Minnesota was what negative ten yeah. a week two weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. So right when I knew we were flying into there, I'm like, oh, that's gonna be wonderful. <laughs> that's gonna be awesome. <laughs> but yeah, so, so we sat on the plane. I turned my I watched the whole movie. Yeah, I turned my phone back on and was texting my wife and some friends, and I was just like, I, this is this is this is boring. This is <laughs> like, I'm, looks like I'm gonna be home at about eleven thirty now, and huh. then uh, eleven or eleven. It, first it said like ten forty five. Then the the estimated time of arrival was like eleven fifteen, eleven thirty, eleven forty five. I was like pushed back. Oh. So uh, anyways, we, we eventually did get up. We the eventually, flight actually went just fine. Yeah, we eventually yeah. took off. It was just we had a seventy or an eighty mile an hour uh, headwind. Um, so it felt like we weren't moving we weren't, anywhere. Yeah, it looked like we weren't moving. It looked like you know you'd pull it up and. And some of the flights we were doing 500 miles an hour, 450 or whatever. Yeah. And this flight felt like we were doing 250 miles an hour. Just and it was just like, man, are we going to get there? Like, we got there. We landed just like they said we would. It was a two-hour and 40-minute flight. Like, there wasn't any, you know, anything bad or wrong. But by or... that point, it was basically midnight. Yeah, we landed. And by the time we got off the plane, it was 1159. Yeah. Which was crazy. <laughs> Yeah. So, so anyway, so, uh, almost two hours late into Boise. Goes without saying, right after this podcast, we're basically just going. Literally, home I got and off the plane the like I off. literally just walked. Like uh, I walked off the plane. I didn't stop for you guys. I didn't no. stop to wait. I just walked down to luggage. Yeah, we're just because I was ready to go. Like yeah. I was, yeah. I was like, I'm gonna get my bag. I'm gonna get my. Uber well, and, and that's where like home. I'm, dude. My nose is running. I'm sitting there, like you know, walking with a tissue, holding my face, and I'm like, get me out of this place. Get me <laughs> yeah. my bag. You know, and Katie, I felt bad because I told her we were getting in at this time. Yeah. And she, gosh, she'd been, she'd been waiting for like 45 minutes. And yeah. I, and you I, showed me on the plate, like her, on I, your uh, camera system. And I house. told her, and I was like, hey, I'm like, I'm like, you're, you know, you're leaving pretty early, but she didn't get my text until she got there. And she's like, well, there's no point in me going home. Right. I'll just sit here and wait. So uh, I was like, grab my stuff. I'm running out. You know, see you guys tomorrow. Yeah, you so, didn't want to make her wait. <clears throat> um, but yeah, so anyways, we're gonna finish this podcast up, and then we're all going home. Yeah. And then, um, but it was I'll, great. I got got home twelve yeah. fifteen in my door. Yep. Threw my bags down, kissed my wife, yep. went to bed. Woke yep. up this morning, took Hadley to school. Yep. Plates for the suburban came, which was dope. Nice. Got to put those on after the podcast, <laughs> and then just I hung out at home. Yeah. And we came in only to do the podcast because we we kind of need to. Give you guys this data yeah. dump, so to speak. Just wait for us. So and uh, do it well, fresh. And, and we know you guys want to hear about it. So, yeah. um, but then I'm going home. Yeah, I hear <laughs> yeah. that. I'm uh, I'm going to be taking Friday off because I have some uh, I have some car stuff going down on Friday. Nice Ooh. coils are going on on the nice. Civic, and I'm excited Ooh. that in the wheels. And so, um, but yeah, we'll be here for you know tomorrow and uh, and Thursday for the Q and A. Yep. So. That will definitely be happening. So for those who are fans of the Thursday Q and A's, not to worry, we got you covered. So we'll be doing that. But in the meantime, but we're home, hear. guys, till <laughs> Jan- June. So yeah. no more trips. So. We'll have people come in to visit, which will be exciting and fun. I know the ultimate goal is to get more people to come to us. Yes, <laughs> yes. Please come please, hang out with us. Please, just you know, like if you're feeling like you're like, hey, can I come over there? We'll be like, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm not I'm not trying to be a rogue. Doors always open. We'll take you to the Boise Fry Company. We'll take you to Well, yeah. we, get, to we get strangers visiting who like, just like, "Oh, I, I bought your stuff one time, but I didn't realize you were here in town and passed through. Can I get a tour?" Yeah, yeah absolutely. Come on down. Hang out with us. Get the tour, man. So, yeah, yeah we're uh we're open to that. But anyway, guys, Let's see, about an hour eight into it. Great. Okay, well, that's good for Main Show 80, I'd say. That's yeah. a good one. <clears throat> All right, guys. Well, let's get some rest. Let's uh, feel better. And <laughs> when tomorrow rolls around, we'll be able to get a few things done on Thursday. If and we we'll feel better. <clears throat> if yeah. we feel better. I feel <laughs> it coming on. Oh, God, it sounds so terrible. Okay. Anyway, guys, 
Thank you so much for listening. Thank Hopefully, you for listening. <laughs> it will sound better. Thank you, G Technic. Thank you, G Technic. Thank yes. you to everybody that came up and said hello. Said they yes. listen to the podcast. They're fans of the podcast. Thank you to everybody that follows us, that likes us, that sees our stuff. You guys have no idea how nice that was to have everybody come up and say hi. I Seriously. literally I had a gentleman come <clears> up and just tell me, Hey man, I just wanted you to know you're a good dad. Oh. And that means a ton to yeah. see that. So and and hear that and I appreciate it and I really do and it means it means the world to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody that came out that that enjoys listening to this, downloads this, watches all our stuff. You guys are amazing and we can't thank you enough. So oh. shout out to Javier, shout out to Attender, shout out to Lars and you know Ram Ram and everybody else we ran into there. Big thank you to all you guys yep. for making it a fun and, and thank you to trip. Lars. For spending seven euros a <laughs> month so that he can listen to this on YouTube oh my gosh. when he's driving YouTube premium, and or baby. flying. So, yeah. wow. Lars, you are amazing, and we want wow. you to know that. And if you could put comments below, everybody, and tell Lars thank you for subscribing to YouTube Premium just for this. <laughs> You don't yeah. have to do that, but it's, or, you know, it's, it's, he'd, probably li- some... he'd probably like it. <laughs> if you're going to yeah. buy some color lock stuff anyway, maybe shout him out and tell him the reason you're doing it yeah. is because. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. We will catch you next week. We'll see ya. See ya. Bye.